Hello and welcome to my Model Corner Project 25. I had wanted to undertake another 350 scale ship build, but I didn't wish to take on a larger capital ship right now, and I also sought to do something from the Imperial Japanese Navy, World War II era. I had narrowed it down to the heavy cruiser Tone and the destroyer Yukikaze. By more or less of a coin toss, the Yukikaze won out. We'll be approaching the construction and painting with many of the same techniques used in our previous ship and aircraft projects. This is the 25th amateur model bill for the Max Afterburner channel. To mark this milestone, Free Time Hobbies is offering customers a limited time 10% discount offer on their first order using the promo code from this episode. Free Time Hobbies has been around for 15 years and is rated number one in customer service by Newsweek. They specialize in a wide selection of ship models and ship accessories, and they also offer planes, armor, and model car kits, all at consistently great prices. If they list an item as in stock, you can rest assured it is available, ready to be shipped directly to you to meet your hobby needs. Also be sure to hop onto Free Time's email list so you don't miss out on any of their newest releases and specials. So stop by now and use promo code MAXFREETIME10 and get that nice 10% discount on your first order. Now sound battle stations and let's launch this ship build. To start with, we have a choice to do a waterline mock-up for an Etsy diorama, or the full hull option. We'll go with the hull of the ship on this one. This project was particularly challenging for me. Oftentimes I felt I was building a ship in the bottle, as the model is very small and we're adding photo edge and rigging to it. I'm used to having small photo edge, but usually I'm adding it to relatively larger plastic kit parts. In this case, it was adding very small to small. It was a great challenge of my microsurgery abilities. During the final reveal, I'll provide some shots to juxtapose the Yukikaze with my models of the USS Indianapolis and the IGN Yamato that are also in the same 350 scale as this destroyer to present a good sense of what you may face should you build this identical kit.
Our next step is to add the supporting bulkheads and then the sides of the mid and upper hull. It can be a little trepidatious at first with these skirts, but to me it lives up to its reputation so far with finely fitting parts. Gluing them from the inside of the seam line inch by inch reduces visible glue residue and cleanup. Be careful with the thin cement as it can cross to the other side of the seam line and under your fingertips. While the turrets fit well together, there are some seam lines that need a little filling. There are different aftermarket photo etch sets out there specialized for this kit. I decided to go with the reasonably priced and readily available white ensign set which has just enough detail for this particular model without getting overly complicated. I only added what I felt was necessary as some of the pieces duplicated the kit included photo etch set. In other cases, it would be an unnecessary exercise in removing adequately molded features and replacing it with brass which provided no additional detail. This kit includes jigs to assist in holding and aligning the pieces in place for the mass as we slowly get the parts into a self-sustaining configuration.
As you may have noticed, I don't use conventional tools to bend my photo etch into shape. I simply use a couple of box cutter blades, which is how I initially learned. I have a small PE bending tool especially made for this work, but I've never even removed it from its package. As you can see, many of the photo etch rails here are very small and didn't hold the glue very well, so we resort to placing the glue on the part. As the glue dries, we can better bend and adjust the pieces into place. It will look pretty ugly early on, but once we paint and detail, the mess should disappear. If I showed all the clips where the photo etch fell off or took many attempts to affix, I'd have a 30 minute blooper video on that alone.
Though I usually prefer to add any display bases at the end, early installation proved beneficial as it protected the propellers, rudder, and struts. It also provided a convenient handhold to maneuver the model safely during construction and reduce some of the risk of damaging something. This kit provides a transparency for the bridge windows, which is the first I've ever seen. Usually there is just a blank space for the windows, or they are filled in with plastic. In this clip, you can see some of the photo etch is getting bent during our work. Near the end, we'll have to go in with some fine tweezers and get everything back into proper shape. For the depth charge davits, we can create a hybrid piece between the PE and the plastic kit part since the brass piece base is paper thin.
We have these nice metal anchor chains to install. It can be cut to length, or we can ensure one end is properly secured to the deck and feed the slack end into the anchor holes. Working our way along the deck, we'll need to add the rails before adding our delicate mass which would be prone to damage as we work the overall vessel. For our sea salt residue and rust, we can use oil paints, applying them randomly and then drawing them out with clean mineral spirits. I spread it out until the paint is invisible which subtly returns as the spirits evaporate.
For our rigging, we can use the Easy Line, which has some nice flexibility to it. Easy Line tends to curl up in reaction to the CA glue if the glue is applied to it first rather than the plastic piece. It's best to apply the super glue to the plastic part and then attach one end of the line to the glue. It usually bonds instantly, but give it some time to strengthen the connection before pulling and attaching the other end. As you saw a little earlier, one rigging work technique is to use nail clippers to closely cut off the excess. There is no rigging guide within the instructions. We can rely on photos of the actual ship and the artist's rendering of the Yukikasi. Since the model is so small, it's better to do a representative amount rather than going overboard with too many lines. We're about done, and time to add a coat of flat clear to even out the tones and remove the gloss of the super glue, especially on the deck rail bases. Hope you enjoyed this one. Take care, and we'll see you later.